Hello everyone, welcome to the next lecture of the course Machine Learning for Core Engineering Disciplines. In the last lecture, we looked at the concept of ridge regression to deal with the problem of overfitting in the case of a linear regression model. In this class, I will introduce to you another way in which you can deal with the problem of overfitting that is called lasso and then we will talk about elastic nets which are actually a combination of ridge regression and the lasso method. Let us go on and see how lasso works. So, lasso stands for the least absolute selection and shrinkage operator. Well, it is written the other way shrinkage and selection operator. And it is abbreviated as lasso. And uh, in this model, right, the least absolute shrinkage refers to the lowest possible values. of the parameters in the linear regression model and the word selection means that lasso is able to select the important parameters right by making some of the parameters almost 0 or close to 0 right and this is done by defining the loss function in a slightly different way. So, the loss function as a function of beta, this obviously has the sum of squared errors which is very typical for a linear regression problem. So, that is y i minus the predicted value beta naught plus some j going from 1 to p x i j beta j right and we square it and we have summed over all the data points. And we have a regularization term again with a regularization parameter lambda, but in this case instead of summing over the squared values of the parameters, you are summing over the absolute values of the parameters, right. So, the word absolute, right, comes from here, right, because you are using the absolute values of the parameters and summing over them and using that as a penalty function right to avoid over reliance on any certain set of parameters. So, this is the usual sum of squared errors and this is the penalty right for regularization. Okay. Now, let us see how this will help us. Right. So, as opposed to ridge regression, in lasso some parameters in the optimal beta hat can be exactly or identically 0 and thus it is able to select 
the important features right and uh, this is very less likely to happen in uh, ridge regression ok. So, let us try to understand why this happens. So, if you have the parameters let us say beta 1 and beta 2 and you are trying to look at how the loss function contours look in the space of beta 1 and beta 2. Now, in this case uh, in the case of ridge regression you already know that the problem can be formulated in terms of the constraint j uh, going from 1 to p sum of beta j squared will be some less than equal to t right. So, the problem can also be formulated in this manner and this right inequality basically corresponds to the inner region of a circle right. So, there is a circle here and you are saying that uh, any choice of beta 1 and beta 2 will lie somewhere in this circle right. Now, you are trying to minimize the loss function and if you were to plot the loss function let us say these are contours on which the loss function value does not change. So, these are iso contours for the loss function. right and let us say that as you go to contours that are lower than the previous contour your value of the loss function keeps on decreasing. So, L keeps on decreasing in this direction So, at some point right the contour of the loss function will exactly be the tangent to uh, this curve and that would be the optimal set of parameters that you will pick right. So, this will be basically beta hat for the ridge regression. As you can see in this particular case there is a less chance that beta 1 or beta 2 can be identically 0. However, if you look at uh, the counterpart right for lasso this is what it would look like. I am again going to sketch the space of the parameters beta 1 and beta 2. However, in this case the constraint appears in the form of the sum of the absolute values right. You know that here for lasso the constraint appears as sum j going from 1 to p absolute value of beta j is less than equal to right that is the way in which you can formulate a constraint and this if you think about it carefully is uh, the space inside a rotated uh, square right a rotated square or a rectangle. So, it would look something like this yeah rotated square right this would look like this and in this case it is possible that if you looked at the iso contours. one of them would be a tangent or would intersect the loss function uh, and the uh, constraint here right. And here you can see that beta 1 is exactly equal to 0 right. So, this is how lasso is able to help you by making some of the parameters 0 and you are able to select the more important uh, parameters in the model and thereby avoid the challenge of overfitting right. So, uh, this is obviously an advantage for lasso that it is able to select the parameters rather than just shrink them uh, like what ridge regression does. However, this does come at a cost right as you know uh, this particular function right the absolute value of uh, any number that function is not differentiable at x equals 0 right. So, if you plotted the function mod x right you all know it looks something like this. So, at this point this function is not differentiable function mod x is not differentiable and 
uh, this happens in ridge regression too because your loss function has the sum of squared errors, but it also has this regularization term lambda times sum over the beta j's and this part makes uh, the function non differentiable function non analytically differentiable right when the parameters when any parameter beta j is close to 0. Therefore, you cannot find an analytical solution. Although we derived an analytical solution for ridge regression. So, it has some advantages meaning that it can select the important parameters along with preventing overfitting, but it also has a disadvantage that the analytical solution is not possible and therefore, uh, you must rely on uh, numerically solving the problem. So, numerical methods can be used to minimize the loss function and thus select the optimal beta hat lasso. Okay. Now, so far we have not looked at any particular numerical method for optimization. The simplest possible method is called steepest descent or more popularly gradient descent in the ML community and we will discuss the gradient descent method and its variants in one of the upcoming lectures. But it suffices to say here that we need to use a variant of the gradient descent method. Uh, to solve the lasso problem because again uh, the function is not differentiable. So, some slight variant of the gradient descent method has to be used uh, to select the optimal beta hat lasso. So, this completes the discussion of uh, the lasso algorithm right and I hope that uh, you may find it useful in some of your uh, uh, ML problems. Now, again how is the value of lambda chosen? This is uh, again a hyperparameter, so the lambda value should be chosen by cross validation. If you remember, we had introduced the concept of cross validation very early in the course in one of the initial lectures, although we have not yet described how this is done in practice, we only introduced the concept of cross validation. And here it is important uh, to cross validate to obtain good performance on both the train and the test sets. Right. And like I said, uh, we will end the lecture by introducing the concept of an elastic net. So, an elastic net combines the loss function for ridge regression and lasso. So, by now you should be able to write the combined loss function right. So, in this case L the loss function as a function of the parameters beta would be some i going from 1 to n 
y i minus some j going from 1 to p beta j x i j whole squared plus some j going from 1 to p. So, you have a ridge regularization. So, lambda r beta j squared and then you have a lasso regularization lambda l absolute value of beta j right. So, here you regularize the loss function using both the sum of squared parameters and the sum of the absolute values of the parameters. Obviously, you cannot know a priori which model will work better, will ridge regression work better, will lasso work better or will an elastic net work better. You will have to try all three of these, you will have to optimize the hyperparameters, these regularization parameters for each of these models, then you would have to compare the performance of all three ridge regression, lasso and elastic net on an unseen test data and only then you will be able to choose which particular model works right. So, with that I would like to end this lecture. In this lecture we continued uh, from our previous discussion of ridge regression and we introduced the concept of the least absolute shrinkage and selection operator also called the lasso tool and this lasso operator allows you to not only shrink the parameter so that there is no over reliance on only a particular parameter, but it also allows for selection of parameters because the way in which the loss function is formulated some of the parameters can be identically or exactly 0 and that means you have deselected those parameters and in turn the other parameters got selected. There are advantages of both ridge regression and lasso, ridge regression allows an analytical solution and it allows you to remove the singularity of the x transpose x matrix. On the other hand, while lasso allows for selection of the features or the parameters, it does not afford a linear uh, uh, an analytical solution and you must resort to numerical means to solve the problem. And finally, the elastic net method tries to combine the best of both worlds. Uh, however, a priori it is difficult to say which of these models will give you the best performance on your test and at the end of the day the loss function and the r squared value should be computed on both the training set and the test set and you should choose the model that gives comparable and high performance on both of these sets right. With that uh, we will end this lecture. Uh, in the next class uh, we will try to introduce uh, the bias variance trade off and we will understand uh, the mathematical foundations of overfitting and underfitting and uh, we will segue from there to other kinds of models used in machine learning. Thank you and I really look forward to seeing you in the next class.